Yes, yeah, so everyone, welcome back to Five, another episode of Secret Scouts. Stephen Alson, Anton Ferdinand, you all right? Good, thank you. I'm all right. Today, Anton, we're going to talk about strikers, goal scorers, the ones who get the big bucks, mm-hmm. the ones with all the hype. And I'm going to start it off with someone, and this is different, right? We've sat here and we've talked about some ballers, some kids that are going to be in the Ballon d'Or mentions for years and years and years to come. And we're starting it off a little bit different today because I think this kid's all hype and I ain't buying it. You think? Um, yeah. Baron Boadu, for those going, who are you talking about? But what I would say is this is the reason why the Secret Scout is live and why we're doing it. It's for people to understand and know you can have all the hype, but unless you do it on the pitch, the hype is pointless. You know, and, and I tend to agree with you. This young man, he plays for his country. Um, he plays in, in a good league, in the French league. You know, he's spoken about as having somebody, like I was spoken about as having potential. I didn't feel my full potential. This guy looks like he's doing the same thing. You know, um, he's quick, got a lovely touch. You know, you, you watch his clips in either way, the ball comes into him, his little touches, he sets people off and that is fantastic. He's got that. Always likes to get the ball in a half turn, which I think is a, it's a Dutch thing. Well, let's all look where he does receive the ball, because the one thing I will say about him is he receives it in really good areas. Yeah. Like, he's getting it just outside the box, just inside the box. He's collecting the ball in good areas. And like you say, he's got good link-up play. Yeah, he has got good link-up play. But I like the way he receives the ball in the half turn and looks to, to penetrate and hurt you, mostly by running mm. with the ball. He's a good ball carrier. The concern that I have for him, being a striker slash wide man, slash wide striker, wide forward, I should say, the concern I have is that he's, he's not ruthless enough. Like He's not selfish enough. We're always looking for that pass. Sometimes be selfish, go alone. That's why your stats are what they are, which we'll see at some point. We've seen how many goals he's got in the league. It isn't good enough, especially playing in the French League where you get a chance. For me, it's down to the volume of shots, which might lead into what you were saying about his selfishness. Let's all cut where his volume of shots is. Now, up in the far right, that's Erling Haaland. Loads of shots, loads of goals. That's where you need to be. Like you know, to be your some, rival. Mm, <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's, there's some serious talent the higher and more towards the right that you go. Boadu is right bang in the middle here. And this axis is in terms of your shots per 90. He's at the bottom end. He's taking 1.5 shots per 90. It's not enough. Elite strikers are taking three, four, six shots per game. If you want to score the goals, you've got to take the chances. He ain't taking the chances. And for me, I think he's getting into good areas, but he's maybe being a little bit of a perfectionist with the shots that he takes. I don't think he's having any, you know, that scrappy goal that yeah. anything will do as long as it goes in sort yeah. of mentality. That goal scorer mentality. Yeah. That Jermaine Defoe mentality. Yeah. As long as he scores, don't, know, don't care what it comes off of, as long as it goes in. Yeah, you want to score the, the sublime goals. You want to score the goals from outside the box. You want them. Of course you do. But ultimately, the ball goes in the back of the net off of you, the goal's yours. And mm. as a striker, that's what you should care about, really, right? But see this, this here, this tells you what I'm talking about in terms of being somebody who's hyped and looking at what you think they can do. He's getting into position, he's doing that, but like you said, he's not fulfilling his potential because he's not being clinical enough. No. If he's clinical, we don't talk about potential. No. We talk about he's doing it because he's, 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 he's up yeah. here, he's around here. Look, Vlahovic. Erling Haaland, people that are just banging the goals in. No one's talking about his potential. They're just going, the kid's a monster. Let's have a look where he's actually taking those shots from, though, because we've got that on the map as well. For me, this is really good decision-making in terms of he's taking the shots from the places that you score goals from, right in front of the six-yard box, clustered around the penalty area. That's fantastic. But could he have more of them? Is he taking the perfect shot? Is he looking for all of the circumstances to fall into place before he pulls the trigger? Or is he just... He needs to have more shots. He does, but like you said, he's getting into positions. As a striker, I wasn't a striker, but strikers that I know and that I speak to, Defoe, Darren Bent, 
these guys would be worried if they weren't getting the positions, if they mm. weren't getting the chances. Yeah. And what may be going on in his head, if he misses the chance, that pays on him. I'm telling you now. Any well, he's only having one and a half a game. So if he's only having one and a half a game, that might be the only one he has in that match. Well, that's, then he needs to be looking at the people that are creating for him then. Maybe that might be the case that he might have people that's not creating for him. But when you do get opportunity, your, your numbers have to be better than that. If you're going to be spoken about as someone who fulfilled their potential, you have to start pulling up numbers. Like a, a fantastic um, person who you can talk about potential and never fulfilled it. Freddie Adu. A player who, like I've heard you say many a time, the championship king. Championship, championship, championship manager. manager. Footy manager. Footy manager, king, you know, uh, footy manager, the person you want to buy on football manager. But the the hype and the potential was there for a reason. The talk he's, about he's been everywhere, hasn't he? I mean, exactly. he was he was he came over to Europe. I know he was at Benfica. I think he spent some time in Germany, Frankfurt, maybe. I know that Celtic had him for a little bit. He came on trial where your kid was at United. I mean, he might be worth asking, like, what was he all about? Because no one gave him a contract, no one gave him a chance. And he got them opportunities based on his potential, you know? And it's almost like a similar thing, and I, to bring it back to myself, it's almost like a similar thing to me, how I grew up with the pressure of Rio. I knew I was going to get opportunities. These guys are going to get opportunities because of the potential that they're showing. Mm. You have to deliver when you get them opportunities. I knew I had to deliver when I got the opportunity, you know? And essentially, this guy ain't doing that. And that worries me for him because although he might go on to have a fantastic career like he is at the moment, he's playing for his country, you can't deny that. He's having a good career, playing for his country, playing for a good team. But he could be not in the top bracket. I don't see him being in the top bracket. I don't see him being in the top bracket. But he could be in a bracket where you look at it and go, okay, he fulfilled his potential. Mm. That'll be the bracket below, I think. And being a West Ham fan and being someone who grew up in West Ham, the person who comes to mind is Freddie Sears. Freddie Sears scored in his debut. I played in the game against, against Blackburn. See, I've never heard of him. Hey, oh. Well, you should do, because he, 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 he was a West Ham kid. For, Did for he a, debut? Yeah, he debuted. Played, played, scored in his debut against Blackburn. Hit the ground running. Got a couple of injuries and, and never fulfilled his potential. Wasn't able to, to get a good solid run in the team. You know, um, Junior Stanislas, who plays for Bournemouth now, who, another one, got into West Ham first team. Unbelievable attributes, ball carrier, skills, unselfish, assist or a joke, but couldn't make it at West Ham in terms of having a career at West Ham. Because he if he would have fulfilled his potential, he'd probably still be at West Ham now. Same as Freddie. Both still would have been young enough to play now. But because they didn't, they had to go on to Pasha's new and create a career for themselves outside the Premier League. Freddie didn't manage to come back into the Premier League, but Junior Stanislas, Junior Stanislas has and had a fantastic career. This guy don't want to be the one that's in 10 years' time going, ah, oh, shoulda, coulda, woulda. Because that's what's staring him in the face unless he starts converting his chances into numbers. See, it ain't all roses. It ain't all everyone's amazing. Sometimes we're going to tell you some harsh truths. Now I want to talk to you about someone who is doing the business, though. Someone who is currently reaching their potential, Karim Adeyemi. Ooh, this, this guy. I've been watching these clips and even my wife was saying to me, like, what are you watching that? Like, you're right, because I was oohing and ahhing watching him. <laughs> it was unbelievable. Seriously, the stuff he was doing, so fast and direct. Don't give defenders a chance to get set because he just comes out. And as a defender, defending pace and young players watching this, young kids watching this, your coaches will tell you, when you're running at someone, don't go at them slow. If you go at them slow, you're giving me an opportunity to now, me, make yeah. your mind up for Step you. Step my feet, guide exactly. you. 
and, and force you where I want you to go. When you're coming at me at pace, I don't know what to do. What way did I show him? What foot is he? Oh, no. Do I go left? Do I go right? Oh, no. He's going to beat me. No, I've got to turn and got to run. You've got to make split decisions quicker, which makes it harder for the defender. Mm. This guy does that in abundance. One man counter attacking, low centre of gravity, unbelievable dribble. And like you said, he, he hunts down centre halves and he, he runs at you. And I, I can't quite tell from you know, the angle that you get on TV with him, but it feels like he's almost going left shoulder, right shoulder, left shoulder to sort of unsettle that centre half so that centre half can't just start to to get a bit of a wedge on him and start guiding him one way. Do you know what really surprised me? And I haven't seen this in a long, long time, right? See when he's wide and he's breaking. The best player that I've played with and anyone who's played with him in terms of running at full speed and delivering on the run, Jermaine Pennant. Jermaine Pennant on the run, full tilt, whip on a six months. He was a joke. This guy can cross a ball at full tilt. He's got the shimmies at full tilt. This and and when I saw it, I was like, wow, the only player that I've seen do that is Pennant. It's Pennant. I was lucky enough to play with him. What a player. Unbelievable. Like, seriously. Another one. Potential didn't fulfill it fully. Played in massive games, played for big clubs. But for what he had, for what artillery he had in, in his locker. He should have been one of the best. He should have 50 cap for England. He was a joke. This boy can deliver a ball well, on the run. His deliveries are good and he's getting the assists. But for me, what makes him stand out is, is in opposite of what we've just said about Boadu, the selfishness, the single-mindedness, that when I get in the box, I am pulling that trigger. He, This isn't someone that you have to go, can you have a couple more shots? Can you try and create some... He's just... Just stacking up the shots. And because he's stacking up the shots, he is stacking up the goals as well. He's scoring the Champions League for Salzburg. Not the biggest club out there, but he's putting in goals and assists. He's he's just absolutely blitzing goals in the league for himself. For me, if we were talking about young strikers that maybe people have heard of, maybe they're on the radar a little bit, forget about Boadu. This is mine. Yeah, 100%. I'll take him over Boadu all day long. You know, and... Hmm. Germany have got a conveyor belt of players like this. I need another one that's that's about to come off of it. You got a striker for us? Yeah, I've got another striker for us that I'd like to talk about. Um, not sure you'd like to talk about him, but Liam Bilat. Is that Rory's son? Yes, Rory's son. But has, he, has he got a throw in on him? He must have, but <laughs> to be honest with you, playing for Man City, you don't need it. Because it's ticky-tacky. It's not long balls, not long throws. It's ticky-tacky. But this boy is very, very good. I'm so surprised he ain't had more minutes on the pitch with the first team. With them not having a with striker. With them not having a striker. You know, and, and I watched the uh, vibe with five with, with um, Jermaine Defoe. And I see glimpses of what he was talking about. You know, that shift shot, no back lift, bang, gone. Not delete that. He's got, I, I, I'm seeing clips where he's got that shift, bang. Well, it, Jermaine Defoe does it. I'm, I'll toss Jermaine Defoe like five, eight. Yeah, something like that. A small package. That. He's in five seven uh, with his air forces on. <laughs> there he is. But he uses that um, lateral movement, the speed that he's got, the agility that he's got. This kid's a unit. This is a big lad, and he's still got that sort of agility and still got it. No, no back, back lift. lift, bang. And by the way, good in the air as well. By the way, very good in the air. Not going to need that either. No, but <laughs> tell that the goals. His his array of goals. Is frightening. If you get a chance to watch, oh, if anyone gets a chance to watch his um his goals collection, you will see all types of goals coming across the box, hitting it back across. Like Defoe said, that's the one that the keeper's unsighted. He's got them in his locker, and this is why it surprises me the fact that he ain't played many minutes for the first team under Pep. With Pep understanding, I think, and knowing that he needs a number nine. Mm to go and win the Champions League, to go and win the bigger trophies than just the league. Well, you think this kid can do it? I think he's... If you've got something about you, if you've got a, a talent, like what this, what this boy's got, which is to put the ball in the back of that, which is the hardest thing to do in football, by the way, when you're playing with players like Sterling, Bernardo Silva, Kevin De Bruyne, he's going to flourish. He strikes me as someone, he gets better with the better players he plays with. 
And I think, listen, at the moment, he's got players like we've spoken about before, Cole Palmer, doing all sorts for him in the 23s. Mm. Imagine that being a Mares, a Foden, a De Bruyne, the chances that this boy's going to get. He is a bagsman. You don't get many bagsmen nowadays, but he is a bagsman. All right. There's three strikers that we've decided to talk about today. Uh, let us know in the comments who else, 21 and under, are you thinking is going to absolutely light the scene up. We'll take a look at them. Let us know in the comments as well what position you would like to see us rock next from Anton and myself. Just tune in, make sure to subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Laters.